From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Chief Walters, Barnesboro Police. You call me? Oh, yeah, Chief. I understand you're out at Sally Button's place on the edge of town. What can I do for you? Better get out here, Chief, fast. Oh? Yeah, to pick up a body. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Card Harbor, Massachusetts, to the Intercoastal Maritime and Life Insurance Company, Boston. Assignment, the Meg's Palace matter. Report and expense account continued. Whoever shot young Charlie Buttons there at his sister's home in Barnesboro had disappeared down the gravel road in a cloud of dust. Hence the call to the police. Chief Walters was in his late 30s and definitely on the ball. He made a quick call to the coroner, and then in his car, we took off for Cod Harbor. We've pretty much left him alone over there in Cod Harbor, Mr. Dollar, and so far, they've always managed to keep the peace. This time... Yeah. Now, listen, Chief, and I'll give it to you fast. Yes, do that. Meg McCarthy got some threats to burn her place down, notified the insurance company they sent me out. Understandable. First night there, I spotted a prowler around the cafe. But before I could get to him, somebody slugged me from behind. You didn't know who? Not then, but the prowler turned out to be Tim Beasley, your, well, your deputy over there, I guess you'd call him. Uh, sort of, you know, self-appointed, lazy lout. But didn't he know who slugged you? He said not. It was Meg herself there. She has a powerful right, Dollar. Yeah, I thought of that, too, but let me go on now. The next morning, I went out on the Lily Ann and got tossed overboard. And believe me, Chief, the propeller on one of those boats isn't much fun to tangle with. Yes, Dr. Champion told me he'd had to go over to fix you up. Yeah, anyhow, I was sure that whoever was after me was a member of that crew. Had to be. I see. When I came to back at Meg's, I had visitors. The crew, loaded with sympathy. The crew, that is, except for Charlie Buttons. And that's why you traced him to his sister's house? Uh Uh-huh. And, Chief, he confessed. Then I don't understand. What? He said he was forced to do those things by somebody who knew of his criminal record and was holding it over his head. Criminal record? Charlie Buttons? Yeah, it seems he killed a man once when he was just a kid. The point is, this other person threatened to expose Charlie unless Charlie did his bidding. So Charlie, not being very bright, didn't think he had a chance. You find out who this other person is? No. That's when somebody shoved a gun through the window and back him. He shot him, then took off in the proverbial cloud of dust. Hmm. How are you doing on suspects? Oh, brother, too many. Meg, of course, named her rivals in the cafe business right from the beginning. Well, I wouldn't count them very good suspects. Uh, then there's Captain Billy Morgan, her intended husband. <laughs> what a pair. And if I know Captain Billy, he was just scrounging a lot of free meals. Say, incidentally, I saw him in Barnesburg just before you called. Yeah? Uh, well, Captain Billy is beneficiary of Meg's life policy. And he still owes a lot of dough on the Lily Ann, I understand. Hmm. Who else? Tim Beasley. What? Yeah. No. Look, Dollar, I know he's a good-for-nothing bum who's taken that job of acting mayor, acting police chief, acting everything else so he can live off the fat of the land over there. But... Did you also know that Clem Harris, who runs the other big cafe, is his cousin? His cousin, huh? Oh, and Beasley never kept his promise to dig up the threatening notes Meg received and compare them with the handwriting of the others. Doesn't look good, does it? What do you think, Chief? I'm beginning to wonder if Tim Beasley will be there when we get to Cod Harbor. As it turned out, Tim Beasley was very much in evidence. So was the whole population of Cod Harbor. For as the lights of the little fishing village slowly hove into view, I saw another light down by the waterfront, a rather a big reddish glow. And as we pulled in closer, we could see the long tongues of flame leaping up where it caused it. Yep, Meg's palace was on fire. Chief Walters stepped on it. We took the last few turns on two wheels. Hoses of all sorts and shapes and sizes connected to pumps aboard the nearby fishing boats were throwing powerful streams of water at Meg's Palace, at the back where the fire had apparently started. But the flames continued to spread, even licking along the ground behind the building. That means arson, Johnny. Oil or gasoline spreading around back there. No doubt of it, Chief. How'd it start, Captain Billy? Who knows? But grab a hose and get to work. Get some hose off one of them boats. Montgomery, you crazy boy. Captain Billy Morgan was running the show, and every one of my prize suspects was in there working his head off. 
all of them taking orders from Captain Billy. And then I realized that Meg McCarthy was nowhere around, and I noticed something else. All the firefighting was directed toward the back of the building. The front, thanks to the wind, was untouched. But that's where Meg McCarthy's room was. Chief! Chief Wallace! Hey, Johnny, where are you going? Come on, Chief, give me a hand. What? See that window up there? Well, I'm going to climb up on the front roof of the place. You'll burn to a crisp up there. Got to take that chance, because I think I can blow this whole case wide open. Now, clench your hands so I can step on them and hoist me up. But even right here, the heat is too bad. Come on, quick, come on. Okay, Johnny, but I think you're crazy. Here you are. Now, up. Here you go. The heat was almost unbearable up on that roof. But I knew I had to do it. I crawled low along the shingles, hoping the rotten old roof would hold. And a withering blast that felt like fire itself hit me full in the face as I broke the window of Meg's room. And there she lay, stretched out, unconscious on her bed. There was an ugly, livid mark across her forehead where somebody had struck her down and then left her there at the mercy of the fire. Johnny! The searing heat seemed to press in on me, engulf me. And the open window gave a draft to the flames that were already licking at the sides of the open door. Somehow I managed to wrap a blanket around Meg, covering her face and staggered to the window, blindly groping for it. Johnny! This way, the window! Keep that hose on us here! All right, Johnny. You're all right now, I got you. It's all right, boy. All right. It's all right, Johnny boy. Outside of having your hair singed and losing a suit of clothes, you're all okay. Well, thank goodness you are, Meg. But tell me... Oh, oh, now take it easy. You got a bad burn on that left arm and you got to lie still. Yeah, And would Meg... you believe it, it was Clem Harris, the one I always thought was such an old good blather skite that'd give us each a place to stay here at this house. I wondered where I was when I came to a few minutes ago. I, I guess I misjudged the man. But how about you, Meg? Oh, bless you, darling. You saved me life, and I'll never forget it. May the good Lord strike me down. If it hadn't been for you. Oh, think of it, Johnny. Boy, I'd be laying still in that pile of ashes out there that was once to me a nice cafe. I love you, Johnny, boy, and I'm humble and I'm grateful. Meg, that mark on your head. Oh, the dirty, blathering spalpeen who snuck up in my room and knocked me down and left me there. I'll murderize him when I find him, that dirty cunt. You don't know who it was? How could I when he snuck up from behind me? Oh, Chief Ward, just come in, sir, come in. Well, I must say, you two look pretty good, considering. Ready for a visitor, Johnny? Yeah, hi, Chief. Bring him in. Oh, now, Johnny, are you sure you want visitors until you're feeling better? Bring him in, boys. Right in here. Come on. All right, uh, stop your push-ups. Come on, Gilly. My Billy boy. What's the matter with you, Willie? That look on your face. Oh, and you, Chief Waters. What was the idea of locking up my Willie boy like some dirty scoundrel of a crook when he tried so hard to save my cafe from that awful fire? Who do you think you All are? All right, Meg, simmer down. Don't simmer you talk down. to me like that, you young Meg. whisker snap. Yes, darling. Well, I won't simmer down. What well, was the big idea arresting me that way? Who do you think you are around here? And I'm talking to you, Dollar. You went too far, Captain Billy. I went too far. You're off your course. What are you talking about? Yes, Johnny boy. If you was responsible... Quiet, Meg. Uh, yes, sir. I'm talking about arson, Captain Billy. And murder. And the motives behind them. What? Motives. They were all over the place by half a dozen people. But yours was the strongest. By far. You're off your head. The 25000 insurance on Meg's life. That was the Why, you... One. Let me out of No, just a minute. You take oh, your sure. hand Take it easy, Meg, or I'll have to order you out. But listen to what he's saying. Is that Captain Quiet. Billy was... Quiet, quiet. Yeah, let me finish this, will you, Meg? Played lover boy to her, didn't you, Captain Billy? To make sure you'd be her beneficiary. You're crazy. That's You're enough. dirty. It looked like you right from the first, but I couldn't be sure until I compared the writing on the threatening letters with some of your handwriting I found. Oh, no. So that's the way you found out, you dirty underhanded. Yeah, Captain, that's right. Threatening letters. To make it look like somebody else was out to get her. Her competitors, for instance. And to leave the way clear for you. Willie, boy. No, no, I didn't. I, I mean, I didn't mean to. But... Oh, no, Willie. Tell me it ain't true. Don't touch me. Oh. Why, Billy? Why'd you do it? I had to. I had to have the money or I'd lose my... What? Time. You mean your boat was more to you Go than... on, Billy, and quiet, Mag. Fishing. Fishing was my whole life. 
I had to save my boat. I had to get the money for it. How else could you I ever... You rotten... Go. 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 You rotten... Let me in that I don't know, Johnny boy. Maybe I'll move to some place else and open up. I wouldn't have the heart to here. Cod Harbor, it'd be too. It was here that I met him and I believed him. And, well, I guess this old heart of mine wasn't as tough as I thought it was. Yeah. I'm sorry, Maggie. I'll get over it. Sure I will. Meg McCarthy, Johnny Dollar. No blather and idiot of a man is going to keep Meg McCarthy down. That's the You story. hear me? No man on this whole earth is worth it. Then all of them just a bunch of no good too tight. Oh, no. No, Johnny boy, not you. If only there was more of the likes of you in the world. I love you, Johnny boy. And if I were a bit younger and maybe pretty... Johnny. Yeah? Now tell me, where did you ever get the threat letters you compared the writing of? I'd have swore that I destroyed them, every one. <laughs> know something, Meg? I didn't. Huh? I never saw them. Never saw a sample of Captain Billy Morgan's writing either. You mean you... Oh, no. Huh? Well, it worked, didn't it? Aye. And it serves that conniving murder and blather scoiting... Johnny, I'm afraid I really did love him. <laughs> yeah, it had been a long shot, and thank goodness it had paid off. The courts will take care of Captain Billy. The insurance on her place, of course, will have to be paid to Bank McCarthy, but no life insurance, thank heaven. <laughs> oh, poor me. It'll be a long, long time before she'll fall for sweet talk again. Expense account totaled, including fare and incidentals, back to Hartford, two twenty one sixty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week? Well, they say that diamonds are a girl's best friend. But I wonder, when they're a motive for murder, join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Jack Crucian, Byron Kane, Forrest Lewis, Burt Holland, Stan Jones, Bob Bruce, Austin Green, and Harry Bartell. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs> 